Hello and thank you for watching. In today's unboxing video, we'll be demonstrating how to unbox and set up a Drive Medical Cobra GT4. The Cobra GT4 comes on a pallet. You'll simply need to cut the pallet straps and the clear wrap that's wrapped around the box. The pallet straps are used to attach the box securely to the pallet. Once cut, you can remove the top part of the box by simply lifting straight up. It helps to have a second person but you can get it done with one person as shown in this video. Once you remove the top part of the box, you can begin to remove any loose pieces of cardboard that are placed around the side of the scooter. As you can see when you begin to unbox the scooter, everything is packaged tightly and neatly so that it's delivered safely during transit. Simply make some room, clear the cut pallet straps and the clear plastic wrap pull it out of the way and put it to the side so that you can begin unboxing the rest of the scooter. The Cobra scooter goes up to 10 miles per hour and has a travel range of up to 22 miles on a full charge. It can support up to 450 pounds. It's a very impressive heavy duty mobility scooter by Drive Medical. Here we're simply cutting away any pieces of tape that are securing plastic or cardboard to the unit itself. We removed the headrest, it was just secured by two pieces of tape, and now we're getting ready to remove the seat from the boxing. Simply pick up and put it to the side so that it's nice and safe out of the way. Next, you'll want to lift the tiller by locating the tiller adjustment lever. It's underneath the base of the tiller. Press it in and lift the tiller straight up so that you can access the rest of the components inside of the packaging. You can go ahead and remove the plastic wrapping and the bubble wrap from the tiller. Once the tiller is lifted up, you can cut the bubble wrap that's protecting the packaging that contains the user manual, the rear view mirrors, and the charger. The charger and the rear view mirrors come in separate boxes. Simply open up the packaging. Make sure to not discard your user manual. Keep that handy. Read through it thoroughly so that you know how to operate your unit safely. You should also keep the packaging for at least three to five business days so that you can return it if you wish to. Inside the small brown box, you'll find the charger. You'll need to connect the batteries first, but once you do so, you will want to charge your unit overnight. The charger that comes with the unit is a 24 volt 8 amp XLR charger. It's very easy to use. Simply plug the cable that plugs into the wall to the square part of the charger and the other end right into the scooter to the left side of the tiller, which we'll show you shortly. In the longer white box, you'll find the mirrors. You can put those to the side. They're very easy to install. We'll show you how to shortly. Now, you can begin removing the rest of the plastic from the scooter. There is a good amount of protective sheet plastic protecting the base, which you can begin to unwrap by getting it out from the rear shroud cover it is hooked in underneath and taped, so you will have to remove those pieces of tape to get the plastic wrap off completely. Make sure you don't pull too hard because it can get hooked under the shrouds on the corners and on the sides, and you don't want to pull too hard and potentially crack the plastic shrouds. As you can see, the Cobra GT4 is a very modern looking sporty looking mobility scooter with full suspension. It comes in a grayish black color. It has several panels that are a kind of gunmetal gray and also some that are a darker black color. Towards the rear you will need to disengage the automatic braking system. The freewheel lever is located in the back right. Pull it towards the rear to disengage the brakes. This will allow you to roll the unit off of the pallet. Carefully raise the back of the scooter, preferably with two people, but if you only have one person, carefully take your time and wheel it off of the pallet. Keep in mind the unit does weigh approximately 340 pounds with the batteries so it's very heavy and we don't recommend doing this alone. Once you have the unit out of the box at this point you can move away the boxes 
and get ready to connect the batteries. To connect the batteries, you'll first need to remove the shroud cover. We recommend removing the rubber black grommet that's located right underneath the silver seat post. That way, the silver seat post can clear the shroud cover without the grommet being in the way. Simply pick straight up. It's only attached with Velcro. Inside the battery compartment, you'll find two 12 volt, 75 amp hour batteries. You'll need to connect the two red cables that are not connected. There is a black clip which you'll need to remove first. There's no wrong way to connect the two red cables. There's only one way to connect them. Find the way that fits and then reattach that black clip. The black clip is to ensure that the harness stays attached. Simply press it down until it clicks and then pad down the wires and cables to make sure that they're not going to hold the shroud cover up and prevent it from going all the way down when you reattach it. To reattach the shroud cover, start with the two tabs towards the front on the floorboard Make sure that they're resting right in the little slots that they belong in and then work on the back part of the shroud cover by pushing it down, making sure not to let the seat post, metal post that sticks out, scratch any of the shroud covering itself and then simply put the grommet right over the post and reattach it. At this point you can get the seat, identify the male component of the seat post it's going to slide right into the seat post. You will need to hold the rotating lever in the upward position while putting it down to lock it into place. During this demonstration, we failed to do so. So when you spin it, if it doesn't lock into place, typically the chair will rotate with the rotation lever and lock into position. And it has about eight different positions that it can lock into. If you install the seat and you notice it's rotating without locking into place, Simply pick the seat back up or remove it entirely and then make sure that you're engaging that rotation lever while you drop the chair in. Here we raised the seat just a little bit, held the lever up and then dropped it back into place. And as you can see now, it's locking into position and it's not just rotating freely. That's what you want to see happen when you're installing the seat. Make sure it's locking into place. The armrests do flip up and the chair itself has a recline feature, a semi-recline. It doesn't go all the way forward or all the way back. The headrest is removable and it has three positions that it can lock into, very similar to the headrests of an automobile. In the back of the seat there is a pocket. It has nice white pinstriping on the seat leather. The mirrors can be attached very easily there's threading at the end and it simply twists right in like a bolt would into a piece of wood or any type of bolt that rotates into place. Simply rotate the mirror clockwise until it's tightened all the way. You may need to make some additional adjustments to the base which rotates freely and that's going to be acting as a tensioning nut towards the base of the mirror. We've installed the right side mirror. We're going to take the left hand mirror out of the box and install it in the same way. Simply get the threading into the hole on the steering wheel or simply get the threading into the hole on the tiller bar and rotate clockwise until it's locked into position. On the left side towards the bottom of the handlebars on the tiller you'll notice the XLR charging port. There's a sticker. Remove that sticker. The sticker indicates you have to connect the batteries which we already did. We recommend charging the scooter overnight that's with any mobility scooter really. You're going to want to always charge it overnight to train the batteries. This is going to ensure that your batteries last a long time. After the first day, you don't need to charge it overnight, but always make sure that your batteries are maintaining an adequately charged state. You don't want to get those uh, lights into the red for too long. Always start charging it, even if it's in the yellow. Just try to maintain a battery charge state that's always above 50%. The keys come attached to the right side of the tiller handlebar. Simply cut them off. It comes with a spare. The ignition is on the right side. Turn the key, semi-turn clockwise to turn on the uh, unit, and you'll see the lights turn on. 
On the dash, we have a few different options to display, starting with the top where it shows the battery charge state. If you are noticing that it's blinking and not working correctly, it's probably because you forgot to engage the parking brake. These units will not work when freewheel mode is engaged. It's a safety feature to ensure that users don't roll down uncontrollably when on an incline if the battery dies. So turn off the unit, engage the parking brake again, and turn it on. It should work just fine. Now you'll notice there are a second set of lights. That's the speed indicator light. If you hit the turtle, it's going to slow it down and some of those yellow lights will start to disappear. That's going to make sh the unit go slower. On the other side, to the right side at the top, the first button you'll see is a rabbit. If you press that button, it's going to light up more of the yellow lights on the speed indicator section. So the more lights you have lit up, the faster it will go. Turtle means fast. I'm sorry, turtle means slow. Rabbit means fast. You can use this scooter with your right or left hand independently. The throttle, uh, forward and reverse throttle bars work independently with your left or your right hand. So on the left side, you pull back to go backwards and push forward to go forward. With your right hand, it's inverted. Now on the dash, you will see a high and low button in the middle. That's going to adjust your speed. To the left, you have a hazard button. That's going to make your hazard lights turn on. They will go off in the front and in the rear. We're going to give you, give you a demonstration of what those lights look like when we turn off the lights in the warehouse. They're very bright. So if you are driving at night, those lights are going to be the same lights that you would use for your turn signals, which we'll demonstrate here shortly. But it definitely does a great job at being visible in the nighttime or in low light areas. Now towards the rear, we also have a universal one inch hitch adapter, which can be used to install a rear basket, oxygen tank holder, cane holder, quad cane holder, and various other types of accessories. On the bottom of the armrest, you'll find rotation knobs, and those are going to set the lowest point at which the armrest can go. So if you recline the chair uh, slightly, you may want to lower that recline point for the armrests so that it maintains a level position relative to the recline of the back of the seat. Again, on the right side, you'll see the lever that allows you to rotate the seat and lock it into various positions, but you also have a depth adjuster level. Uh, lever, I'm sorry. So two levers, the one that's further out closer to you is to slide the seat forward and back, and the one that's off to the right side is to rotate the seat. So there is a, quite a few different comfort adjustability options here, which makes this unit very unique. You can also uh, tilt the tiller handlebars, as we showed you earlier, forward or backwards to bring the handlebars closer to you or further away from you to open up more space. In the front, we have a really bright headlight. You can see the front suspension. Um, we also want to demonstrate that there is a parking manual parking brake setup. So if you pull that down, pull that back, and then push that silver button down, it's going to lock the bicycle brake into place. It's, it's a disc-style brake that works as a override braking system to the already existing automatic braking system. This scooter will brake automatically when you let go of the throttle. You don't need to actually use that handbrake. All in all, we highly recommend this scooter. It's tax-free and shipping is free at mobilityscootersdirect.com.